Hey everyone, welcome to Our Small Footprint. Today was a big day. I forgot to do the intro this morning, so I'm doing this this evening. So today was full of apples. I didn't put a video out this, this morning because I knew that I needed to spend the whole day doing apples. So we have done apple butter. I had apple butter barbecue sauce that I did the other day that's on another video I might come put it on this one too I'll have a look at what footage I've got and then apples done in a honey, a, um, honey syrup as well and I've got the apple pie filling from the other day sitting here too I made apple scrap vinegar and I made some apple cinnamon pancake syrup so all of the apples so watch along and see all the things that I got done today and then at the end I will show you all jars lined up and waiting to be sorted tomorrow. All right, enjoy watching. So the first thing I wanted to start off today with the apples was to just get some apples in the pressure canner for apple sauce or apple butter. Uh, so the what I tried the other day and seemed to work well was that I cut the apples into big chunks took the cores out and then stuck them in my buffalo pressure canner which is a stainless steel pressure canner and just put them under pressure so I did some reading and I found a bunch of people that had used the instant pot to make apple sauce and I thought I wonder if I can do it in my stovetop one. There's no reason that I shouldn't be able to. So I wanted to give it a go. So I put filled the pressure canner to the fill line and then added some water in the bottom to help stop scalding. I did get a little bit of scorching still and I am wondering if maybe I put the canning rack in the bottom that would bring the apple just up off the surface and enough water it would help with that. But I have to test that out. And the scorching wasn't bad enough to change the taste of the applesauce at all it darkened it a little bit but it just more resembles apple butter it has a little bit of a caramelized type flavor to it um, rather than being just a plain applesauce so the scorching didn't seem to impact the end result at all so I put the lid on and I brought it up to pressure and I left it at pressure for five minutes because that's what seemed to be the done thing around uh, so then I let it come down off pressure naturally before taking the lid off so it seems to work really well the you need to make sure you put enough water in the bottom of it and you need to be aware that it that you still might get it a lot darker color than you intended so it depends on what you're using it for what your preference is and whether you're fussy about that kind of thing but for me it was um, just not that bigger deal so I just filled it five minutes under pressure and then let it come down while that was all going I had to serve up some breakfast we just did a quick sourdough flatbreads with some smoked pork and I put a bit of parmesan and mayo on mine as well so this was what was food in the middle of it all once the pressure canner had come down naturally this is what it looks like so it just looks like apple butter that hasn't been blended yet uh, I tend to use I try to use the immersion blender on in the pot but it's quite a significantly large pot and splashback is quite hot and things like that and it didn't get it quite as smooth as I liked so I don't seem to have filmed it for some reason but what I did was I filled my Thermomix to the max line uh, from the pot and then put it in the thermix at speed six for about 10 seconds and got this lovely smooth apple butter out of it so you have to make sure to debubble it in those jars when you do it this way because you're adding a lot of air with the thermix too uh, but it ended up really lovely and smooth so I used that with each batch I would just fill the thermix and then blend it and then pour it into the jars um, over and you know same process the thermix filled two and a bit jars I think each batch in the thermix so I kept on doing that did all the normal clean the rims put the rings on lids on clips on and processed these in the water bath canner while they were going I did went to do some spiralizing of the apples so I bought myself a new spiralizer because the one that the kids use the peeler doesn't work on however <laughs> 
There's one downside to buying oversized apples, it seems, and that is that the spiralizers don't like oversized apples. So this first couple of minutes of sped up clip is showing how I failed at spiralizing them initially. Tried to adjust the PLR. Sometimes the the middle core prong would just go round and round in the middle instead of turning the apple because of the pressure and of the peeler being too much for the size of the apple. Uh, I tried turning the peeler off but that didn't help with a lot of them because the size of them was so large that they weren't going through the coring facility properly. The, there was a lot of fiddling with the settings and the and the way it was set up to get it to work. I did in the end get it to work fairly well. It wasn't particularly consistent with removing the skins but that doesn't really worry me because I quite often can my apple skins on anyway. Uh, I just thought I'd do some jars without the skins because I had plans for the skins as well. So the uh, the oversized apples did cause a little bit of an issue there. Uh, my knife skills are actually good enough that I could probably slice these apples up without taking too much time out, to be honest. Uh, but the spiralizer was so that I could get assistance in that as well, which I didn't get today. The kids were busy doing other things, but it does mean that the kids could help spiralize them as well uh, for the next batch. But it, it worked out in the end, just not as neat as it could be. So once the apple butter was done, we pulled those jars out to put them aside. Uh, and this is what they looked like when they came out of the canner. So they're very dark. They are apple butter rather than apple sauce. They're quite dark, quite caramelized, very thick, uh, which is what I was aiming for. So that worked out well for that. I then prepared a light honey syrup for the uh, apple slices. So I decided to use some of the local honey uh, to make it just a an extra light honey syrup it's something like 22 cups of water to a cup of honey and uh, just for these ones as something simple so that I can use these apples however I want once I open a jar uh, so I just put the honey in the water and put it on the stove so that that honey would dissolve and made sure that that was nice and dissolved through there for ease of use while that was heating up I made some apple peel syrup from the peels that I kept so I haven't shown it very well here uh, you're gonna have to excuse the roosters in the background I have no idea why they are going off but anyway the uh, I haven't shown it very well here but I've put whole cinnamon sticks in with all these apple peels so then I've put I put four or five of them in there I think and then I topped it up with water so there's all the the peels from all the apples as well as about four or five cinnamon sticks topped up with water and put on the stove I'm gonna bring that up to a boil and then turn it down to a simmer for 10 minutes and then let it steep with a lid on for 15 20 minutes or you know when I get to it <laughs> So with this honey syrup, I added the apple slices. So what we're doing is we're heating the apple slices through to try and remove the air from the apple slices. This is intended to help with the, uh, the canning process to stop them from floating. It's intended to help them stay at the bottom of the jar in the liquid and fill the jars better with it. I still had some floating with these because I got a bit lazy towards the end and stopped... Uh, stopped leaving them in the water long enough I think uh, because as I, said, I just got a bit lazy towards the end it all got a bit too much but the that's the process and then fill the jars with those apple pieces so you're going to fill them in nice and firm so that because they're going to shrink as the uh, as it's processed especially if you haven't um, heated them through well enough so you want to make sure that you pack the jars really well uh, I don't mind all the broken pieces of apple because I have no idea what I'm going to use these for anyway uh, and the kids will eat them straight out of the jar if worse comes to worse so that's fine. I then strained the apple cinnamon syrup it's such a lovely color with the red skins as well as the cinnamon through it so I strained it through a colander that I had here pushed it through and got as much liquid as possible out of it. I started out just draining it and then pushing on it with my hand and then I progressed to pushing on it with the uh, rolling pin and then one, when I used with the rolling pin I made sure to strain that through a secondary strainer in case I'd got any chunks of um, uh, apple into that by pushing it through the 
colander or anything like that just to keep it nice and clear and lump free and then I measured out the syrup to find out approximately how much syrup I had there for uh, adding sugar so the rule of thumb for this adding sugar is that it's half a cup per cup of uh, syrup per liquid plus an extra half cup now I have trouble adding that much sugar to things but I know that the sugar in this is for a purpose it's to thicken it and things like that and it should only take like 10 minutes if you add the right quantity of sugar but I didn't so I um, I can't remember how much I added to be honest but it wasn't anywhere near the quantity but it just meant that I had to cook it down for longer uh, it means you get less results out of it though you get less liquid out of it because the sugar becomes more liquid and then thickens whereas if you're going to cook it down then you're losing a whole lot of liquid while you're cooking it down to condense it so it's preference I may make another batch and put the full lot of sugar in it and have a test of it and see how it is because by condensing it down this much with the quantity that you use you're probably using the same amount of sugar anyway and it's not like this is for drinking this is a, a syrup to drizzle over I don't know what yet but it tastes really nice <laughs> so once that was done the sugar was added it went back on the stove and simmered till it was ready which was late for me uh, while in amongst everything else I made the kids had dinner I can't remember what they had for dinner to be honest uh, but I also made them an apple crisp just a really simple one so I still had two jars of the apple pie filling that had failed that were in the jar the seals had failed in the jar sorry in the fridge so I grabbed them out of the fridge I also had a jar here that had only had like two-thirds of apple butter and a, a third of apple pieces that just happened to fill it and I was gonna can it and I decided to just mix it through that apple pie filling so I made the simple crisp topping oats, bit of spelt flour, a bit of coconut oil, a little bit of sugar crumbled and put over the top. It was nothing special, but it was just a dessert for the kids because I'm pretty sure, I can't remember what dinner was, but I'm pretty sure it was sort of just cobbled together because my kitchen was full of apples. So uh, that took about 40 minutes to go to cook in the oven and I don't think I got a photo of it coming out. Uh, but yes, this, was, this is a favoured dessert for them. Uh, I would have made some custard or something to go with it if I had have had kitchen space, but I didn't. So they just ate it as is. Uh, they may have had some yogurt with it, I'm not real sure, but they enjoyed it regardless. I also made some apple scrap vinegar with all the cores and any bruised bits and scraps and things like that. So I have one of these big jars here and I dissolved a uh, four or five tablespoons of sugar in with some a bit of warm water and then topped it up with cold water so you want to fill the jar with any of your cores um, chunks that you cut off that had a bit of bruising or uh, anything like that anything that you've got can go in here pretty much any scraps so I filled the jar to the neck of the jar with those um, scraps and and cores and there was a couple of big apples that got really destroyed by the spiralizer when I was trying that so I cut them up a little bit as well covered it all with water and then I had a smaller lid that fits the smaller version of these jars that works really well I took the seal off it and sterilized it and used it as a weight to hold down all the scraps underneath the liquid you want to keep the liquid the scraps under the liquid or they can mold uh, if you're really good about rotating it and mixing it and stuff it's not as big a deal but I am not good with that <laughs> and I know it so I need to keep all the scraps underneath the liquid so I put the uh, lid on the top and push it all down make sure that there's liquid coming up it works as like a moat type uh, valve for that keeps the liquid above the solids underneath and then you want to cover it with something cloth I've just used a folded tea towel here with a bit of elastic over the top uh, to keep any uh, bugs and stuff out of it the little midgy fruit flies really love it if they've got access a bit like with the starter after that I poured the syrup into the bottles it's still a little thin it'll thicken up a little bit in the cold but I don't think it's going to get thick thick but I think I will still find plenty of uses for it even if it's used as a sugar syrup in some baking like a liquid sweetener because it's really tasty and it's mostly apple I didn't use very much sugar at all in it so it'll be a bit like and sort of like an almost natural sweetener it's very strong on the cinnamon I probably shouldn't have put as many cinnamon sticks in there but it tastes really good and I'm putting these jars in the steam canner because that's nice and quick take 15 minutes while as the last thing of the night to do 
All right, so it's like, I don't know, 7.30. It's only five degrees in my kitchen. It's lovely. I've got the last batch of the syrup in the steam canner. So it's got to run for 15 minutes once it hits the correct there's lines on the top I can't show you at the moment because there's enough light but there's lines on a steam canner that tell you the zones that it needs to be in for it to be at the right pressure inside the steam canner I suppose that's the way it is so it has to get to the dark green on the dial and stay there for 15 minutes for me to seal those apple cinnamon syrups so that's the last thing I've got to do today I've just uh, just stretched and folded my dough here uh, that needed doing I need to take that inside where it's warm the kitchen's still a little bit of a mess but it's just gonna be that's just gonna be live so the steam can is on the hot plate here doing that and then so let me show you what we got done today I'm gonna flip you around so here's my apples so we have all these ones here are just apples in the honeyed syrup I got a little bit lazy towards the end there you can see that one's got quite a bit of floating I got a bit lazy towards the end and didn't cook them long enough in the um, honey syrup so we've got a few floating ones there too much air in the apples but that's fine and then all of these are apple butter these large 27s here all of these are the apple butter barbecue sauce except that the kids have gone through I want to say mm -hmm. four jars already which <laughs> is great but not great anyway that's all the apple butter barbecue and then that's some more of the plain apple butter there from the previous day's batch and one there from the current one and then this is the apple pie filling that ended up a bit um, soft that I canned the other day I used that in the apple crisp tonight the ones that didn't seal in the fridge as well so that there is the apple pie filling so that is all the that plus the syrups which are still to come out of the fridge uh, sorry the fridge the steam canner is my apple for today now I reckon I got through 40 kilos of apples today and I probably 20 the other day so I've only gone through about 60 kilos of my 180 <laughs> a third of the way through so uh, I'm gonna run short on jars though depending on what I do with it so we shall see what gets done in the next few days. But that is a really good start and that is just so nice to have all of that on the shelf. Uh, I also like the fact that the kids really liked the apple butter barbecue. So with the apple butter, each jar of them, I think it works out to be about um, four cups of apple butter in each jar. And I used, uh, I used 16 cups in the batch of apple butter barbecue that I made. So it means that I could open some of those apple butter jars and make the bu more barbecue sauce as needed for that too. Uh, so that works well. But yeah, so that was today. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed watching and I will see you again in the next day or so. See you later.